Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by once again. I'm on a roll. Two videos, one week, back to back. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy talk. All right, let's just get right into it because I know I babble quite a bit. I'm not going to tell you the paper until the end of the video because I just want to see how this paper behaves. I've worked with it before, but I just I wanted to share. I do have some pencil marks that you can probably see uh, that just from some art that I did not in the end want to do after all. So I tried my best to erase it, but uh, that didn't go so well. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over it because it's all good. I'm going to go ahead and reach for some raw and burnt sienna from Windsor Newton Cotman. I'm just going to begin to add it in the background. I'm going to go for a freestyle or no sketch, I should say, a no sketch watercolor bird, whimsical style. I love seeing clusters of deep color, little pockets of color in the corner. The tape I use is from the Dollar Tree and I have my gold ready with a good amount of water in there because I have a feeling I'm gonna be adding some gold. This paper just keeps surprising me and while there is, you know, warping and bumping and buckling while I'm doing this, it's all good. No worries. So I'm just kind of just massaging in the color, if you will. Love having that as a background. I'm going to go ahead and take some Olympic Rainforest. It's one of my favorite greens from Kim LeBeau's Handmade Watercolors. I'm also going to bring that into the background, but I'm going to bring in a bit more of the raw sienna. Just around this area. And that's because I will most likely bring in um, a tree with some leaves. So I think it'll look nice. I know it looks like a hot mess right now, but once everything is all set and done, I'm pretty sure everything will look really nice. Adding a bit more of the burnt sienna. Thank you for all the lovely compliments and views in my gnome video. I know it was extra long and I kind of cringe looking at it now, <laughs> watching it because um, oh, I talk a lot. I do talk an awful lot. All right, I'm really putting this paper to the test. All right. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this, but before I do, because it just needs more water, um, I'm going to spray just a few droplets of water, just love that, <laughs> whatever that creates, I love it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat set this, I'll be right back. Okay, it's nice and dry, and as you can see, it's softened up quite a bit, and I love it. I went ahead and picked up some raw castle from Renaissance Polska, and I'm going to mix that into whatever I have left here on my blending dish uh, from the burnt sienna mixture. And I'm just going to add in a branch, a bit of a wonky branch. And what I like to do is, I like to have another brush ready. Dry pretty quickly here. Might have to go a little bit more. There we go. So I just like to have another brush here ready. And I just pull that color out. And 
just glide my brush along. That color, oops, almost dropped my brushes there. All the way to the end. No branches aren't perfectly, you know, have a perfect little end there, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> there we go. That's fine. Don't want to overwork it. And just come back on top. And just kind of drag it along. I'm not going for realism here, but. It does give me a pretty good looking branch. Let me bring it up a bit. Maybe there's even, well, let's see, yeah, I'm gonna bring it this way because my little birdie's gonna be right here in the middle. Super simple, easy way to draw trees or, you know, or paint trees or branches and whatnot and just keep a bit of the realism, I think. The texture too, really nice. This paper is just amazing. I love it. All right, let me go ahead and clean off my brush. And again, I'm going for freestyle here, so no sketching. But I've done these birds in my dreams. <laughs> I would like to contribute this video to Dina Tolefsen's, um current bird challenge, but it's not an official, like, nature-based bird. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her if I can share this video, uh, share the hashtag. Um, I'm going to share the video regardless, but if she allows me to share the video, then... Um, as, you know, as far as her hashtag challenge is concerned, then I will update the title. But um, all right, let's go ahead and get going. I'm looking for a brighter blue this morning. Uh, usually not what I do, but I'm looking for a brighter blue. So I'm blending in some cerulean blue hue from Windsor Newton Cotman and a bit of the phthalo blue. And that should give me a beautiful, bright, punchy color. A lot of you guys know I love to uh, paint upside down, so I'm going to go ahead and just shape my little birdie here. I'm going for a nice little chunky bird. I really like this style of whimsical, whimsical bird art. Okay, very, very simple. Let's go ahead and turn it upside down or right side up. I'm going to lighten up the top part. Just drag my brush across, just like that. Maybe I can even, let me see here. Okay, yep, I like this much better. There we go, still keeping the whimsy shape. Very nice. I'm going to take advantage that that is still wet here at the bottom. And I'll take whatever I have left of that raw castle. And I'll just go ahead and add the little legs. Very simple shape. And then I'll 
we'll just lighten that up just a bit. Very nice. Okay, I like that. And I don't mind that the raw castle is blending in in the blue area here. That is okay. No worries. And then what I'll do is I'll grab a bit more of that raw sienna. And I want to just take advantage of that everything is nice and wet and a lot of these birds have their beaks facing way up I'm using the number four Princeton velvet touch Glad that I was able to cover most of the line work from the previous artwork that didn't turn out so well. I'm actually going to drop in some blue around here. And as far as the wing, well, that's the fun part. <laughs> I'm hoping it works out what I have in my head. Uh, before I do that, though, let's go ahead and take care of The tail feathers here. I'm going to mix a little bit of that phthalo blue, cerulean blue mixture with the green that I have just to add. Nah, you know what? No, no, I'm not because I'm going to stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick to the plan. And did that on purpose. <laughs> okay, so very fancy, fancy. And I'll just take my brush and just gently light it on the top okay I can always darken things up later on but Right now, that seems to look pretty good. All right, I need a much more stiffer brush or firmer brush for this because I really need to keep this shape. All right, I'm a bit nervous because I want to go in with a heart-shaped wing and really want to do the whole whimsy thing. So you know what? I might, yeah, let me go ahead and heat set some of this area right here. I don't mind some light. Went on to wet blending, even went on to damp, but I want the heart-shaped wing uh, to really just pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat set things. Okay, so this is probably where a sketch would have, <laughs> me doing a sketch would have been a good idea, but you know what, I'm already in it. Too late to go back now, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin it to shape out the heart and hope and hope that well that it'll work out <laughs> I'm hoping the hard line will disappear next time I will do a sketch I can always add some detail work too, you know, to the heart. So 
actually not that bad. I used a combination of the uh, Cotman colors, cadmium, cadmium red deep hue and cadmium, no, cadmium red deep hue, yes, and cadmium red pale hue. Dip my brush into a little bit of water. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring excuse me, this this part a little bit more up. I don't know, I just always see this whimsical style art. And whenever the artist chooses to use red against blue, it just pops. Everything just looks so, just so nice. So this looks great. I think this looks great, you know. But obviously I have that hard line right there, so next time I will definitely do a sketch. All right, I'm actually pretty happy with this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a good amount of this uh, red color left over. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and just bring in some red hearts. Very simple. Kind of long, almost um, like a primitive heart shape. I love primitive artwork. They don't all have to be the same, the same size. Or style, but I'll add one, two, and I'll just do a little small one right over here. Okay, very good. I'm also going to darken up the legs just a bit. I'm gonna grab some more raw kessel, excuse the reach. And I'm going for a very simple, kind of like, um, well, I'll just show you. Oh my goodness. How, <laughs> thank goodness that's just all it was. I completely didn't even pay attention there. Some of you must have been saying, hello, Laura, you're on top of that heart. It's still wet. It's, I got a little smudge right there. Okay, so yeah, I see a lot of um, whimsical art, whimsical bird art with um, the birds, little bird feet that look like that. So I'll just go ahead and do that as well. Very simple. And because the other leg, it almost looks like it's hidden from behind right here. I'm going to just play up on that. Just adding some darker color. I'm going to bring this a little bit higher up into the bird. Just to blend it. That's actually pretty cute. Go ahead and just blend a little bit here. It's basically just going on top of the line there and just softening it out. All right. I'm actually really happy with this. I'll go ahead and darken up the beak just a bit. I 
I said just a bit and look at that <laughs> Ooh, forget how how dark this rock castle truly is no worries this paper lets me blend Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go for some indigo. Where'd it go? Right here. Yep. And I'm going to mix it with whatever I have left of the blue. And I'm going to just darken up a few things here and there. blending brush here with me. So yep, just darkening things up. Be careful that it's still very, very wet. Can also darken up back here. Side the line as usual. Okay, I've been asked several times, um, you know, the look that I get here. It's like a very textured, very soft, blended look. And I've always, always enjoyed looking at that in other artists' work. Usually it's art that's rendered with markers and, you know, very kind of, I would say digital. It's just very smooth, very blended, very soft. And I've always been a fan of that look since my card making days. And I kind of brought that with me when I began to experiment with watercolor. I never did let that style go. I remember taking a few Copic classes back in, geez, 2012, 2013. And the teacher, the Copic certified teacher would get upset with me because I would blend from dark to light. And obviously that's a big no-no when you first begin to blend, I guess. I don't know, but um, yeah, she wasn't a fan of how I used to blend at all. She would compliment me on the end result, but how, you know, how I got there, she just didn't like for some reason. So I never did finish it up, finish up that class. I, I left, I left after, yeah, I think four classes, but I never did uh, stop blending this way either. So. I'm going to go ahead and just add that there. Very nice. All right, and that is still, yep, that's still damp. Let me uh, very quickly fix this little heart here. We won't leave that. You know what, I'll just give all of them a quick quick little coat of darker color just to make them pop a bit more. And 
then I'm going to heat set the wing, the heart shaped wing. And then we can finish up. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little, just like a little dot on the very top corners of the hearts. And this will just be like the little hole, if you will, where I can string the hearts around the tree. Okay, I'll let that dry for a few moments. I'm also going to uh, come underneath the heart right here with the darker blue blend and just give a bit of shading. And I already have an idea to help me with that harsh line. And then I'll just gently blend that in. seems a little too too harsh but this paper just allows me to blend like this very easily very smoothly it's just wonderful what a wonderful paper All right, I love this blend right here too it's just so textured so smooth All right let's go ahead and add We've all seen whimsical birds like this with their eyes closed. And just to add a bit of depth, do the same thing, just soften things up. That is one beautiful looking bird. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, I was thinking of adding leaves, but we are at, yeah, we're almost at a half hour here. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and just Yeah, not bad at all. All right, so usually I would darken up the heart as well, but I think it looks okay. I'm beginning to see some tape lifting. That's totally normal, especially for this paper. I'm gonna grab the little Clearo, little Clearo uh, pan here and I am going to add some highlights, some very soft shimmery highlights to some of the, to the bird here. <laughs> you know what it is? I, I struggle with uh, describing what I'm trying to do. I noticed in my last video, I do a lot of apologizing and I, I'm working on that. I'm definitely working on that. As I begin to share more often, 
things will just, you know, come together for me. All right, so I'm gonna also add some, let's see, yeah, I think right here would be a nice place to see some extra sheen and shimmer. gently blend that out and you can always you know tilt the paper kind of push it back a bit I do that a lot so it's just some subtle hints of of gold here and there I think I can do Sorry for all the moving around here. I just love to see it on the top too. Like a natural, natural pretty shimmery highlight. It's very subtle. It's not, you know, it's not loud at all. It doesn't overpower. And I can get carried away very easily with the blending and adding of things. So let's go ahead and begin to add some gold lines. And the first place I'm going to add it is right here. And these gold lines are going to be a bit kind of wonky. They're not going to be straight across. Push down a bit to kind of release some of that pigment. It works. It's a solution. <laughs> it's a solution and it's like, yeah, it's almost like of, um, that line was never there. I'm going to actually add some gold right over here as well. And then I can heat set this and show you guys how it looks everything looks in natural daylight and do the peel reveal okay all right guys I'll be right back let me heat set this okay guys so super quick here I still have a good amount of the gold on my blending palette. I don't want to let it go to waste, so I'm just going to add some random little dots here and there. I don't want to overdo it, but be at the end of each feather. Okay. And then I'll add a couple to each heart. It's barely invisible, I know, but they're there. It's just to clean up whatever I have left on the palette. This will be video number three in my no buy because I have not used these colors in a long time, especially the Calero color. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my you know, my lights here so we can see some natural um, daylight. And yeah, let me just press pause for that. Look at how dark it looks when I do all of that. Okay, it's not as harsh. The lighting is just super harsh, you know, with everything here. But as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, hopefully in a couple months, uh, by summertime, if everything goes well, I'll have my own little art nook and an insane amount of natural light will be able to uh, shine through the window, even on the cloudiest of days. All right, let me just go ahead and autofocus lock you guys so my movements don't become blurry. 
I'm going to just peel back some of the tape. I want to do this part with you guys. But I, let me do some, let me do this real quick. Okay, just wanted to show you things up close. So which way does it go first? I'm not an expert in this at all. Again, this is a Dollar Tree brand masking tape. That's one, lovely so far. I know some people say to do it, peel away from the paper, so. Ave Maria. <laughs> there we go. remove it. If you're wondering what's on the opposite side of this Baohong board, I just finished her up last night. Isn't she a beauty? If you'd like to see um, another one of her come to life, do let me know. I'd be more than happy to share everything. But yep, this is the same board. Let's go ahead and take a look at our beautiful artwork here. So you're probably wondering what paper this is because it's awfully thin. Well, this is what I'm using. Ninety pound. Unbelievable. This paper is fantastic. Yes, it's thin, but if you want a budget-friendly way to introduce yourself to Arsh watercolor paper, especially if you like the textured look, because this is the green torchong, the rough green. Look at that beautiful texture. This is what I use. As of last night, it's currently not available. Um, I purchased this, a good amount of them too, uh, because they're very budget friendly. I paid $10.13. And as you can see, you get 15 sheets. And the size is just wonderful. So that's it. You guys are gonna be seeing a lot more art on this paper because Arsh paper is fantastic to work with. And there you go, budget friendly tape. This is what um, the roll looks like, if I can find it. Well, I can't, great now. I'll miss that point. <laughs> I literally can't find it anywhere. But I also use the blue tape, the painter's tape, for um, larger scale, like heavy duty projects. When I'm dealing with a nine by 12 on a larger board, then I bring that in. But you can clearly see our beautiful bird is very happy. She deserves to be framed, but not nice. All right, you guys, I'm just excited. <laughs> 40 minutes, but I'm hoping you guys will enjoy the video. I tried my best to do less babbling. And again, I'll also share that beauty as well. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.